I'm Nick. By now you would have seen a stack of Founders Edition RTX 3070 reviews and videos and somewhat understand how the RTX 3070s perform. But now it's time to see how the partner cards perform. In this video we're going to take a bit of a look at the RTX 3070 Gaming OC from Gigabyte. So let's check it out. Just to kick this off as well, we've got no idea about availability or whether or not you'll be able to get your hands on these cards at launch at all. We're just here to show you what we found with this card, full stop. Nvidia did not send us a Founders 3070, so we can't compare this Gigabyte card to the Founders 3070 because we physically don't have a Founders 3070. With that said, there's a lot of data to unpack with this video. There's also chapters in all of our videos, so if you want to jump to a certain section of this video or any of our videos, it's just as easy as mousing over the progress bar or checking out the timestamps in the description if you're on mobile. Also, make sure you watch this video all the way to the end to get the context of this whole video. These are also the out of the box figures for this GPU. All of our GPU videos are designed to be this way because a vast majority of people will never overclock their GPUs. And this is more indicative of the real users. And for people who wanna know how they overclock, you've definitely come to the wrong channel. Okay, let's get the benchmarks and comparisons out of the way. The graphs are weighted based on performance of the cards that we're not focusing on from our entire database. Now, the graphs change because the cards perform differently and some cards get knocked off the graph depending on which benchmarks being performed. Some people don't like it, but too bad, that's what works for us. Okay, let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use that magic little pause button at any time during the video to take a closer look at the graphs if you wanna look at them for a tiny bit longer. The first thing you're probably noticing, and even with this first 1080p benchmark, the 3070 is a little bit faster than the 2080 Ti. And this is really gonna be the trend that we're gonna see across this whole video. And when we compare Windows to Linux, we're seeing the Linux performance is slightly better than Windows with Vulkan vs. DX12. At 1440p, we're seeing a pretty minimal uplift compared to the 2080 Ti, but again with Linux, it just edges out Windows and comes out on top across the board. And lastly, at 4K, we're seeing the same being echoed with Vulkan performance slightly trumping DX12. Alrighty, let's move on to Unige and Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed three tests in total. We use a 4K optimized preset, the 1080p extreme preset, and a custom 1440p preset with motion blur and depth of field disabled. Before someone comments something along the lines of us using the stock OpenGL implementation and DX11 for comparison between Windows and Linux, we're comparing the out of the box experience. Those who know how to extract extra performance out of their GPUs and Linux don't need this video. First up with the 1080p Extreme Benchmark, this one is highly GPU bound, and again, we're seeing the 3070 only just beating the 2080 Ti. OpenGL does not perform as well, and that's just how it is in Linux, and we've tested this with other kernels and other distro combinations, but the reality is we're seeing the same thing across the board, and we've addressed this multiple times in videos, and yeah, that's just the story with Linux. At 1440p, the 2080 Ti is only slightly faster, and I like how Superposition can show us that some cards are weaker than others depending on the benchmark being used. At 4K, we're seeing the same thing happen with both Windows and Linux. The 3070 Gaming OC is slightly slower than the 2080 Ti on this occasion as well. Next up is Basemark GPU. Now Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in Windows and Linux. At 1080p, we're seeing the Gigabyte 3070 Gaming OC pull away from the 2080 Ti, and this trend continues in the rest of the Basemark testing as well. At 1440p, the differences are about the same as they are at 1080p in both Windows and Linux. At 
And finally, this is again echoed at 4K in both Windows and Linux as well. All right, let's quickly circle back the Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We're gonna do some DLSS and some Ray Trace Shadow benchmarks. Although Shadow of the Tomb Raider only supports DLSS 1.0, we do include Death Stranding because of its DLSS 2.0 support. At 1440p, the results are pretty much as you'd expect. It's really echoing what we saw with the earlier test that we did with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Next up is Death Stranding. Now we decided to do a 2080 Ti versus 3070 DLSS 2.0 comparison at 1440p and 4K at max settings. We also test some professional workloads. It's the type of benchmark most people will overlook, but it's really important for people who are buying these GPUs for workstations. We ran our one hour stress test in Fermark and we couldn't get the Gigabyte RTX 3070 Gaming OC above 65 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. And the result is fairly good, but be aware though, we're running on an open air test bench and the results in a closed system will be far different from what we observed. And we also include this result because our open air test bench environment is super consistent and we've tested everything this exact same way. And you have to remember though, we like to make sure there are zero variables. As far as power consumption, we observe this card hitting a maximum of around 275 watts at full load. As far as what these cards offer compared to the Founders cards, you're getting a tiny bit of RGB. Now this card is pretty reminiscent of the 20 series 2080 Ti Gaming OC from Gigabyte with a little bit more of an angular look. You're also getting a card that doesn't use the new 12 pin power connector. I've Gotta say though, I, I don't like the power connectors on this card being separated and the pins themselves are not solid pins. And I think Gigabyte, uh, they should revise these pins to be solid because if you're moving your GP multiple times like I do when I'm testing this stuff, you can actually wear the pins down, you can bend them and they can be made so you can never plug in your power cables at all again. And I get that they're trying to make the PCB smaller, but the pins just have to be solid. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because after pulling this GPU off the test bench a few times, I noticed that one of the pins had bent and I had to bend it back in to plug in the power connector. If it was a solid pin, it probably wouldn't have moved. So yeah. We also observed that the 3070 Gaming OC is a pretty quiet card with little to no coil wine. It's definitely not as severe as other 20 and 30 series cards that we've tested lately. And you have to remember though, this is an open air test system and you're definitely gonna hear everything. In a closed system, I'm pretty sure that you're not going to hear this card at all. Now, acoustic observations make more sense for normal users since most of the numbers for acoustic testing don't make sense to a regular punter. Acoustics are only really tangible if the card is sitting right next to you. I'm liking the overall size of the card too. It's a two and a half slot card and it's not huge for the sake of being huge like that Aorus 3080 Extreme that we checked out the other day. I think it's just too big and personally for builds, I also prefer working with cards like this because they're more versatile and they fit in smaller systems. And I think many of you guys are gonna agree that the size of this card is pretty spot on. And I'd love to see if this card ends up fitting in the NZXT H1 without any issues as well because it might be a card that I would consider using myself. We don't have final pricing at the time of filming this video, but the Gigabyte RTX 3070 Gaming OC will be, it'll be more expensive than the Founders card, which is around about 499 USD and around 809 Aussie dollars respectively. Now, I would say that it's gonna be at least one to $200 more expensive in both US and Aussie dollars, but 
At the time of filming this video, it's pretty hard to say how much this card's gonna cost. I did ask, but it's just not been finalized when we're actually making this video. Okay, let's uh, quickly address the elephant in the room now that these Radiant 6000 GPUs have finally been announced. And I've been saying this since the beginning of all of this 30 series stuff, after what AMD showed us and what I can now say is absolutely wait until we can get our hands on Radeon 6000 as the benchmark. I'm not gonna hype them up at all, but I think that having competition is really healthy and better for all of us. Nvidia's just basically been doing whatever they want for such a long time, and I'm, I'm pretty keen to see what these new cards can do. I also think that people who are holding out for these 30 series cards should also absolutely wait so they know the whole story before spending their hard earned money on a new GPU. In a few weeks, we're gonna know absolutely everything about all of the GPUs. So if you possibly can, please wait because it could be better, it could be worse, but I think it's just better to know the whole story. Okay. I think we're done here. Let me guys know what you think about these new 3070s. Let us know what you think about all these new Radeon cards as well. I, I think it's healthy to have competition in the market. I think it's better for the consumer at the end of the day as well. It's gonna make it a lot nicer if you guys have a choice between AMD and Nvidia, like we did many years ago. It's been such a long time since you could pick either AMD or Nvidia or ATI back then or whatever. And knowing that no matter which way you go, you're gonna get a pretty good experience and you can really start to base your purchases on your budget and you know what works best for you. Let us know what you think. Anyways guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you hated the video, you know what to do, hit that dislike button twice. If you wanna get early access, to not to videos like this, cause this is like a launch review, head on over to our float plane. If you like the music, I make all the music. It's available on our Patreon. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And guys, like I'm, I'm gonna say this, and I talked about this on Twitter a little bit earlier, uh, with the Radeon 6000 stuff, it is exciting to see that there's going to be competition, hopefully, but don't jump on the hype train until we know all of the facts and we can see some benchmarks. Limit your expectations. And I think I said this with the 3070, oh, sorry, the whole 3070, 30 series launch. I keep saying 3070. But yeah, limit your expectations because we just don't know all of the facts yet. Thanks for watching.